Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jay Mullane, coming to you one more time with another Bible lesson. We thank God for this day, a day that was not promised to us. He gave it to us. And I believe he gave this day to us for a reason. That's yes, right. And we are so thankful to him for that. We greet you this morning in the exalted name of our Lord, our Savior, and who is none other than Jesus Christ. We thank God for being able to continue to get the word out. We thank God for those of you who are helping to get the word out. We thank God for those of you who are sharing with one another, who are helping each other and providing rides for them, providing uh, uh, hospital uh Hospitals, if they need to go to the hospital, you're taking them and you're getting food and water for them. We thank God for you and we pray that you would continue that as long as we need to do it. We do know that the word of God must go out. Mm -hmm. There may be a shortage on water. There may be a shortage on food. But there should never be a shortage on the word of God. We have some exciting news to share with you. On July, first Sunday in July, which will be the 5th, I believe, uh, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper here at Greater Peace at 10 a.m. And we're going to try observing it from the parking lot. Uh, more information will be given to you on that, how we're going to conduct the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday in July. Um, we're so thankful. You know, God didn't have to let us be here today, but He He's chosen to do it, mm -hmm. and we are thankful for it. Yes. Thank you, brothers, for being with us this day. Yes. Thank you, brothers, for doing the things that you are doing in the community. Yes. Um, Thank you for helping others to observe the proper procedure to meet when we meet together. And thank you for helping to get the word of God out. Yes, right. Amen to that. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. Amen, amen, yeah. amen. I thank God for you carrying on the ministry even with covert 19 staring us in the face but you know what i know today god is still in charge Come on, now. we continue to remind you to be cognizant of your surroundings um watch what you're doing wherever you are and it would be good if two or more could travel together uh, we thank god for all that's being done this day. Yes. This is the day yes. that the Lord has made. Yes. I will rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes. How about you this, Amen. on this day? Amen. We want to start today in the well, Bible study in the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. I still want to kind of give this a title, Doing What You Do for the Right Reason. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, make sure you're doing it for the right reason. In Romans chapter 12, and of course going to include 13 before we finish this particular series, um, the overriding theme in chapters 12 and 13 deals with relationship. You're going to find their relationship to God, verses 1 and 2, relationship to gifts of the Spirit, verses 3 and 8, relationship to other believers, verses 9 through 16, relationship to unbelievers. Yes, we have and should have a relationship to unbelievers as well. In chapter 13, relationship to government. 
and in chapter in verses 8 through 14 of chapter 13 for relationship to neighbors we want to cover all of those areas before we finish this particular series. Uh, the book of Romans was written somewhere around 57 AD. Paul wrote this epistle from Rome, from Greece, shall I say. Paul had not, at the time that he wrote this epistle, he had not visited uh, Rome. He wouldn't do that until later on. But Paul was so concerned about these saints in Rome that they received the truth of the word of God. The theme of this whole book probably is found in, I need someone to read those two verses of Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. You'll find the theme to this whole book book. Romans chapter 1 verses 16 and 17 where Paul makes a statement about his attitude, his understanding of the gospel. Romans chapter 1. Does anyone have verse 16? For he says? Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from the faith, from faith to faith. And it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Thank you, brother, for reading those verses. We believe that those two verses uh, capitalizes the uh, entire book for I'm not ashamed of the gospel Paul said for it is what it is the power of God unto salvation to whom to the Jew as well as to the Gentile you see, contained in the gospel, you'll find the righteousness of God. Yeah. The only way to get right with God is to endorse, to accept, internalize the gospel. Mm -hmm. That is the only way to be made right with God. Yes. Now, for our Bible study this morning, uh, today, should I say, uh, in Romans chapter 12, I'm going to begin with verse number one. Paul started this chapter out by saying, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service or which is your reasonable worship. Yes. Paul says I beseech. That means I implore you. I plead with you. Mm -hmm. I beg you if you will. Therefore you don't find Paul giving a whole lot of commands here, but he was he was uh, pleading with the Romans, the new Christians who were new in the faith. He was pleading with them to present themselves unto God, mm -hmm. as they once presented themselves unto whomever they were serving. Paul said, now that you are a Christian, now present yourself unto God. Yes. He says, I beseech you, therefore. And I always say, when you see a therefore in Scripture, you ought to ask yourself, what's that therefore, therefore? It's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore. Paul is pointing backwards to all that he had said previously. 
He says, since this is true concerning the Christian, now here is something that we ought to consider. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. God is full of mercy. Mm -hmm. Oh, if we understood how merciful he is, it would change our lives. Well. God is a God of mercy. His mercy never ends. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. He used a lot of his mercy on me this morning. But he got plenty for you. He has plenty for the rest of his children. That's all. Yes. God, mercy never ceases. Right. I thank God for that. Right. I can count on his mercy. Mm -hmm. When things are not going well in my life, I can depend upon God's mercy. Mm -hmm. I can depend upon his grace. Yes. His mercy never runs out. Yeah. Aren't you glad about that? All right. And then in verse 2, Romans chapter 12, verse number 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, All right. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm -hmm. that you may do what? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect yes. will of God. All right. Paul was sharing with these uh, saints at Rome not to allow the world to squeeze them into its mold. Mm -hmm. Rather than being conformed, yes. we ought to be what? Scripture says, we ought to be transformed. Yes. How so? How are we going to become transformed? By the renewing yes. of our mind. Yes. For what purpose? To prove something. Mm -hmm. When our mind is renewed, we understand more things that God is saying to us that we would if our mind were not removed or were not renewed. We'll prove something. God's will is good. It's wise to accept it. It is completely trustworthy. As we study the word of God, he will show us some things concerning how to live this Christian life. In Jeremiah chapter 29, I'm going to read verse 11, I believe, in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. God said to his people, and this can be carried over to us today in the grace age, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know, God is always thinking about our good. God is always looking out for our welfare. Even when we are going through some trying times in life, don't become despondent. Because if you are a child of God, He's your Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. you are in good hands. Yeah. You can't be in any better hand right. than being in the hand of your loving Heavenly Father. Right. Have our mind renewed. How do you have your mind renewed? By studying. The yes. Word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, you can read uh, other books. 
Nothing wrong with that, as long as they're good books to read. But if you want your mind renewed, do what Paul said to Timothy. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study what? Study the Word. Yes. Listen to what God is saying to us. Observe what God has told us that we could do, that we should do. And he's told us some things that we are not to do because those things will be harmful and hurtful unto us. God will show us the will for our life that he's already purposed for us. God has left each of us here for a reason. He has a certain thing that he wants each of us to do. And the way God has fixed it, he doesn't want anyone else to do what he wants you to do. He doesn't want anyone else to do what I, he wants me to do. First part of our outline, relationship, relationship to God. Now I'm going to move to the second part of our outline. Relationship to gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to pick it with verse number 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every child of God, each child of God, can walk in, operate in, live in, adhere to faith. Because God has given each person a measure of faith. Now I know that all of us are not on the same playing field at the same level when it comes to our faith. But as we continue to walk with the Lord and He continues to talk to us, our faith will increase. As we see the Lord doing things in our lives and others' lives, then we begin to realize that the Lord is on our side. Now. Our fourth step in our relationship deals with our body. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read verse number four. For as we have many members in one body. All right. And all members have not the same office. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a moment. Paul is going to draw a comparison between the this human body and the spiritual body. All right. mm -hmm. Just as we have many members in our human body, and they all have not or do not have the same function. Right. You don't expect your feet to do what your hand does. Uh -huh. You don't expect your eyes to do what your ears are designed to do. All right. But they all need to work in what? In harmony. Uh -huh. If the ear decided, I'm not going to hear for you anymore, Boy, look how much you'd miss out on. Yes. If the eyes decide, I'm not going to see for you anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh my, look how much you would miss. Mm -hmm. Because the eye would say, I'm not going to see. Ear might say, I'm not going to hear. Yep. Feet might say, I'm not going to walk the way you want me to walk. Right. The hands might say, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be chaotic, wouldn't it? Yes. So now in verse number 5, 
Paul talked about the human body in verse number four, but the many members. But in verse number five, so we, right. talk about Christians now, mm -hmm. being many, mm -hmm. are one body in Christ. Well, well. And everyone member one of another. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. From one Christian has joy, we ought to all rejoice. Mm -hmm. When one Christian has to suffer, we ought to all feel that pain. Mm -hmm. Because we are members of the same spiritual body. Mm -hmm. In verses 6 through 8, there we're going to close this broadcast for today. In verses 6, 7, and 8. He speaks of the purpose of the different gifts. Why do we have hands? They have a function. Why do we have ears? They have a function. Why do we have eyes? They have a function. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the spiritual body. God has set his children mm -hmm. in the body yes. of Christ and given them the gift that he wants them to employ. Mm -hmm. in the body of Christ mm -hmm. for the benefit of other Christians. Yes. All right, I'm going to read verses 6, 7, and 8 without a whole lot of commentary, but I'll read the verses. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, All right. whether prophecy, mm -hmm. let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Our right. ministry, mm -hmm. let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teaches, All right. let us wait on our teaching. Okay. That is, let us ministry in that particular area. Mm -hmm. If God has given you a certain gift, use it. Because when you use it, you glorify God and you will edify the saints. Verse number eight, or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with what? Simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Mm -hmm. In other words, all who have been placed in the body of Christ yes. have been given a gift to be employed mm -hmm. in the body of Christ for the glorification of God and for the edification of the saints. Yes, so let us serve where he has placed us and then the body will run smoothly. We thank God for this time that we've had together. We thank God for your prayers. We thank God for you loving one another. We thank God for each of you. Let us continue to pray yes. one for another. Yes. If there is someone who will listen to this broadcast today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. In other words, if you do not have a relationship with God right. through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. it's not too late. Mm -hmm. You can come to him, ask him to give you his salvation. Mm -hmm. You got to do it with meaning now. You just can't say the word. Just, All right. All right. Uh, you, got, you, you got to mean what you say. Yes, Lord. And the Lord will mm -hmm. provide salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can ask the Lord. You can say to the Lord, thank you, Father. For giving your life. Yes. At Calvary. Mm -hmm. Thank you for. 
being raised from the dead in order that you may give me the salvation when that time comes. Father, I ask you this moment, this day, to save my eternal soul. Let me walk with you in a pleasing way. In Jesus' name, amen.